Cyberpunk 2077 has gone through a plethora of different changes, and now with the release of Phantom Liberty, there's even more of a reason to go back to this cult classic. But how does it run on Steam Deck? Well, let's dig in. If you've played Cyberpunk 2077 on Xbox Series X, PS5 or a high-end PC, get that image out of your head right now. The Steam Deck version will not look like that. This game simply has too many moving parts to recreate the experience on Valve's handheld. That's just how it is. You can also forget about hitting a smooth 60 frames per second. It's a wickedly advanced game and despite how powerful the Steam Deck is, there is a limit to what you can and can't do. Now, the fact that Cyberpunk 27 runs on the Steam Deck at all is no small miracle, and how well it does run is, frankly, astounding. Cars, people doing stuff, gunfights, tech abilities, at any given time there can be multiple elements at play all at once. And somehow, the Steam Deck can handle it given the right settings. In short, as long as you go into Cyberpunk 2077 understanding the limitations of the hardware you're playing on, the experience is still just as enjoyable as it is on PC and its console counterparts. So, let's talk performance. As noted, 60 frames per second is straight out the window. Even on the lowest settings, it's unachievable. Normally that could be an issue, but given how stunning the world of Night City remains, it's not the end of the world. And the trade-off, visuals versus frames, is a price worth paying. What these settings are designed for is high 30s to low 40s. Indoor areas can yield higher results, with frames reaching as high as 45. Outside is, predictably, where the biggest performance hits happen. When you've got neon lights, sunlight beaming through the cracks, characters loitering and hollering obscenities, cars whizzing past, it's no surprise the frame counter takes a hit. It's all kinds of expected, to be honest. Still, although frames can drop as low as 30 briefly, the drops are manageable for the most part. Dropping down low for one or two frames doesn't really affect the experience in any meaningful way. As for the visuals, my Cyberpunk 2077 Steam Deck settings ditch elements like shadow quality in favour of making sure people and textures look detailed. When you're this close to the screen, you want to make sure those elements pop. You will lose some reflection quality as well, but playing on the highest settings becomes too much for the deck to handle anyway. TDP, meanwhile, is one area where it's worth experimenting. Cyberpunk 2077 ideally needs the full whack of 15 TDP to operate at its fullest, but with TDP comes an unbearable fan noise. It's not quite as bad as the ASUS ROG Ally, but you'll hear it. If you can tune it out or have headphones on, it's not an issue. But for those of us who don't have headphones handy, it's worth dropping the TDP down to as low as 10. That will tell the fan to behave and only knocks around 4 frames off. It's a worthy sacrifice as far as I'm concerned. No one wants to deal with the fan of full volume. Okay, let's talk settings. For the quick preset, just set it straight to custom. Ignore the DLSS stuff, that's irrelevant here. For dynamic resolution scaling, leave that to off. The reason being, we want to use AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.1, so that needs to be off. Set that to performance and change the image sharpening to whatever you're comfortable with. I like it all the way up, but some people find that a bit grainy. Next, make sure your field of view is set to 80. That's kind of the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned. Film grain and chromatic aberration, I like to have these off, but that's up to you. Depth of field we want to leave on so that we can see things in the distance fairly clearly. Lens flare off because it's a freaking eyesore. Motion blur as well you can turn off because the game will run smoothly enough. Right, here's the bit about shadows I was talking about. Contact shadows, turn that straight off. It looks great, but the cost isn't worth a trade-off. Improve facial lighting geometry, leave on, and set your anistropy, if I'm saying that right, to 8. Local mesh quality low, local shadow quality low, cascaded shadow range low, cascaded shadow resolution low, distant shadow resolution low, volumetric fog resolution, again, low, volumetric cloud quality off. Although this will make clouds look less real, it doesn't really matter all that much. Max dynamic decals set to medium, screen space reflections quality medium, subsurface scattering quality medium, ambient occlusion low, colour precision set to medium as well, mirror quality set to low as that will tank performance, level of detail stick to low, crowd density low as well, and ignore the ray tracing part. Next skip over to video, I like to have V-Sync on, some people don't, I like it though because I hate tearing. Set that on to 60 and turn maximum FPS on if you don't have it on already. For the value, you can go with 60 or you can go with 50. Cyberpunk will rarely hit 60 frames per second, so the jump between when it does that and drops down to 45 will be noticeable. 
As a middle ground, I like to leave it on 50 just to be safe. Windowed mode, go with whatever you feels best, I go with full screen. Resolution, 1280 by 800 is the maximum you want. Simply because that will fill the Steam Deck screen, and as the Steam Deck can only output at 800p anyway, there's no reason for that to be any higher. HDR mode ignore, and hit apply when you're done. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Cyberpunk 2077 and its bugs. It goes without saying Cyberpunk had a tumultuous launch at best. Bugs were commonplace and you couldn't hop online without seeing a new meme every few seconds. Fast forward to the here and now and CD Projekt Red has made good on its promise to fix Cyberpunk 2077. You will still experience crashes, bugs, weird kinks and the driving, while improved, isn't quite where it needs to be. But on a scale of 1 to Skyrim, Cyberpunk is the most stable of the two. Oh, how the times change. It is worth noting, if you haven't played Cyberpunk 2077 and you love RPGs, this game is on a level of its own making. The story frequently captivates, it's not afraid to deal with more adult material, and is one of those games that knocks the wind out of you. In short, it's a masterpiece. Cyberpunk on Steam Deck is technically one of the worst versions of the game. Distant textures aren't as snappy, you need to drop things like shadows and some of the screen space reflections, and that's before we get into the awful blurry text. Of course, some of this can be forgiven. The Steam Deck isn't a high-end PC, it's a handheld. If you want to play the latest technical marvels, compromise is a part of the package. What is amazing is how lush Cyberpunk still looks even on the Steam Deck. Despite the compromises to get it to a mostly stable frame rate, it still blinds in all the right ways. If the PC and console versions didn't exist, Cyberpunk on the Steam Deck would be one of the best looking games out there, without question. It's only because they do exist that this version looks worse in comparison. I'll leave you with this closing thought. If you're after something to get lost in, and you understand what the Steam Deck is and isn't capable of, you're sure to come away impressed with Cyberpunk. It's as simple as that. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, and if you'd like to subscribe, that would be brilliant. Until next time, see ya!